Okay, so for today's seminar, we have Senya Su. She's from Texas A&M. She's a fourth year graduate student there working on the Jeffrey Kwan. She works on interacting particle systems, orthogonal polynomials, and quantum groups and dualities and the interactions of all of these objects. She already has several publications and manuscript on this topic. She's uh, giving a background talk for the Pacific Northwest Integral Probability Conference happening here, November 5th and 5th at Oregon State. And this is gonna be a background talk for Jeff's talk at the seminar. So Senya, thank you very much for joining us and giving us this background talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Today I'm going to talk about the orthogonal polynomial dualities of multi-species ASAP and some related process with the method of uh, using the bi star by algebra structure of quantum groups. So uh, first I will talk about some background. I will introduce some basic models and some related models as well. And then I will introduce Markov duality and my main results. And then I will briefly discuss our proofs with uh, the quantum groups. And in the end, if I have time left, I will talk about the other models that my that our method will apply to. So this is joint work with Kiara Franchasi and my advisor Jeffrey Quinn. Okay, uh, so first let me introduce the most basic model called the asymmetric simple exclusion process, or just simply ASAP. It was introduced by Spitzer in 70s and also by some biologists two years earlier. So now we consider a one-dimensional lattice. At each side, there is either a hole denoted by the empty ball here and, uh, and uh, either, or oh, sorry, or a black ball here, which is a particle. So each particle in the system has an independent clock of rate one. When the clock for a particle rains, for example, if at this time the clock for this particle rains, it will try to jump to left or to right with different jump rates alpha and beta. So in this process, alpha and beta are not asymmetric. That's why it is called asymmetric. And the exclusion means that if a particle here tries to jump to a site that is already occupied by another particle. So if this particle tries to jump to this site, then the jump is blocked and this particle will stay at the same site. This is what we call exclusion. Okay, so the next model is the multi-species ASAP. Let me introduce the two species ASAP. It was introduced by Leggett in 1976. So the process can be described as two coupled ASAPs. So here in the first row, we have two different colors of species and we call the black particle the first species and the red particle the second species. And in this process, we assign different priority between uh, different species. For example, here, I would like the black particles to have higher priority over the red particles. So in this process, each species will involve as an ASAP, but there are some non-trivial interactions between different species. For example, here we have a red ball or red particle next to a black particle. And the non-trivial interaction happens when a black ball tries to jump to a site that is occupied by the red ball or, red, or the red particle. Then since it has higher priority, it will force the red particle to switch position with itself. So after this jump, these two particles will switch position. However, if at this time, the red ball tries to jump to right and since it has lower priority than the black particle, the jump will be blocked. And uh, this jump will not happen if 
it's initiated by the red particle. So uh, we can construct multi-species ASAP in the same way. So if we put like n species particles into the system and we assign different priority between different species, we still get a similar process as the two species ASAP. So the multi-species ASAP has some projective projection properties. For example, here in line two, if we ignore the different species, then it will reduce to a usual ASAP. This is called the color blend projection. And if we only uh, care about one species in the process and remove all the other process in, sorry, we remove all the other particles of different species in the particle system, then uh, this will reduce uh, to a usual ASAP as well. Okay, so here is the multi-species ASAP, but what is the parameter J or theta in my title for the multi-species ASAP QJ? So the J is an uh, extra parameter that was created by a Karinshi Gardena Radic and Sasamoto in 2015. They generalized ASAP to ASAP QJ, which allows up to 2J particles at each site. So here is, is an example with uh, 2J equal to 3. So 2J is an uh, integer denoting the maximum number of particles allowed at each site. And the exclusion in this process will happen if a particle tries to jump to a site that is fully occupied. So for example, if site two has three balls, then if other, if a, a particle at site one tries to jump to site two, then the jump will be blocked. So uh, we all, sometimes we call it a spin J ASAP. And for later use, I will introduce uh, ASAP Q theta here. Theta is a inhomogeneous factor, which means we now allow different theta x particles at different site x. And this is called the inhomogeneous ASAP QJ. Okay, so there is another degeneralization. Uh, if we take the J go to infinity in our multi-species ASAP QJ, the process will uh, give us another process called the multi-species Q totally zero, so asymmetric zero range process. So in this process, since J go to infinity, this means uh, at each side X, we now allow, uh, we now have no uh, restrictions on the number of particles. So, and uh, in the J go to infinity limit, uh, the particles can also can only jump to one side, and this is called the direction of drift. So, for example, here in this figure, uh, this is a single species Q tussle, and then in this process, uh, the jump rate of a particle. Uh, depends on the number of particles at this site. So for example, here we have five particles at this site, then the jump rate is uh, related to five. And the particles can only jump to one side, uh, sorry, jump to one direction, which is uh, they can only jump to right. And on the left, here is a picture of uh, multi-species q -tosep. Here we have different species, one, two, three, and four. And the jump rate depends on the number of particles of the same species, and also a number of particles of higher uh, priorities at the same site. Okay, uh, so this is the q -tosep. Okay, uh, I'm going to introduce more models. So for example, uh, here, uh, ASAP is also a degenerate, degeneration of the stochastic six vertex model. So here at any vertex, 
there are six different configurations given by the six pictures. And uh, we assign different probabilities to the six uh, config configurations. So with the six uh, configurations, we can define a model in a positive quadrant with some given boundaries. So first, we give boundaries at the left, the most horizontal vertical line and the bottom horizontal line. And then uh, the, uh, this model can be filled as a directed path in the uh, quadrant. So here is an example of, the, of one uh, configuration. And we let the weight of this configuration to be the product of weights at each vertex. After normalization, we will get a probability measure of this configuration. So uh, let me show you how this is related to uh, ASAP. So the vertex model can be shielded as uh, discrete time particle systems. Let me describe how. So here in this graph, we can uh, we can fill each horizontal line as a different time. For example, the bottom line tells you uh, this is when t, the time is equal to zero. And the second horizontal line is when t equal to one. And this is when t equal to two. And then we give, uh, we put a ball whenever there's a upward arrow here. And we will cut the quadrant by horizontal lines. For example, if this is the resulting horizontal line that we cut from the quadrant, this tells you at this time, T, sorry, before this time T, we have two particles, one at size one and another one at size three. So we start with this particle system. And then at this time t, it, uh, it will become like this. This is uh, because every time we have a horizontal arrow, this tells you the particle will jump to the right. So here, this path here tells you uh, the particle at size one will jump to uh, two, uh, sides away from this original site, then the first particle here will jump to size three, and this particle here will jump outside this uh, three sides. Okay, so this is the how the vertex model is related to uh, particle systems, and uh, we can prove that uh, the stochastic vertex model will converge to ASAP. Okay, uh, so let me introduce the stochastic higher rank high spin vertex model. So the higher rank means this is a multi-species version of uh, the stochastic higher spin vertex model. And the higher spin means that now at each vertex, we allow more than one arrows. So here we can tell that we have two arrows in coming to the vertex, then this means uh, in the corresponding particle systems, we can have two particles at one side. And this corresponds to the ASAP QJ, which uh, has more than one particles at each side. Okay, uh, let me summarize this uh, models with this graph. So this tells you that uh, there are some generations between these two, this different uh, process. For example, if we start with the stochastic, uh, higher, higher rank, higher spin vertex model, it will degenerate to stochastic six vertex model, which will degenerate to the ASAP. And if we start from ASAP Q theta, then it will degenerate to ASAP as well. And if we take theta goes to infinity, the ASAP Q theta will degenerate to Q tau sub. 
And here we have two additional models that I'm not going to uh, introduce in detail, but we will show some re uh, results about these two uh, models. Okay, uh, so now let me uh, introduce the state space of particle configurations. So now we, uh, we have a uh, uh, lattice G with L size, and we let Xi to be the particle configurations, which is a two-dimensional factor. So Xi Ix is a number of particles of species I at site X. If we think of Xi Nx as the number of holes, then this restriction here tells you at each site X, we allow only up to theta X particles. And then here is the generator for multi-species ASAP Q theta. So uh, briefly speaking, the generator is the derivative of transition matrix. Uh, so this generator tells you how the particle configuration uh, can change and what is the jump rate of the change. So here uh, it tells you that uh, a particle of species K can switch position with a particle of species L between two sides X and X plus one with jump rate alpha. So alpha is related to the particle configurations. And as we can tell that alpha and beta, they are not symmetric. That's why this is called asymmetric. Okay. Uh, so can I ask a quick question here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in anticipation, I see that your rates are very specific formulas. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us why you're choosing your rates to by this formulas? Or okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh so this uh I in later I will talk about how we constructed this uh model. Uh, from algebra. So this weight actually comes from algebra and they actually comes from uh, some elements in the algebra and this is uh, what we computed after we apply some represent representation to the elements. Does that okay. answer your question? Yeah, great, thank you. I just okay. wanted to see that these are special rates. Yeah, 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 so they are special. There, there's a algebra, quantum groups, and stuff in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So next, let me introduce what is Markov duality. So uh, we say that two Markov process, they are dual to each other if equation one is satisfied. So on the left-hand side, this is the expectation with respect to the law of ST started from initial condition S, and S hat here is only a parameter. And on the right-hand side, it is defined in the same way. So this relation has to hold for any initial condition S and S hat, and also for any time T. So this is uh, a pretty strong relation. So uh, for later use, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, define this relation with some um, matrix notations. So if the process is has discrete state space, then we can define the duality at the level of process generators. So in this case, we can write both the generators L, I, and the duality function D as uh, matrices. So the duality relation is equivalent to have the equation L1 times matrix D is equal to D times L2 transpose. And if L1 is equal to L2, we have self-duality. So this is the definition for Markov duality. Now let me talk about some applications of duality and orthogonal duality. And maybe we can see why we need to study the Markov duality. So the idea of apply duality results is that uh, we can choose the dual process to be relatively simple. For example- Sorry, I think we have a question. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, I I just want so so for this infinitesimal whatever general what is the state space? What's the oh, space? Uh, Today's space is just the space of all possible uh, configurations. Uh, are this finite? Uh, it can be finite or uh, infinite. Uh, so it's kind of like this. Okay. So it's a, uh, it's a space of all possible configurations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it would be countable, like, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so let me continue. So uh, for example, we can choose the dual process to, to have only one particle so that uh, the dual process can be relatively simple. For example, uh, this, uh, we can apply this to a set with open boundary and also to d-dimensional open SSEP. And we can also let the dual process to have, on, to have only two particles, then this uh, duality result can be used to prove convergence to the KPZ equation. And also uh, we can use make use of the explicit formulas given by duality for the finite particle systems. And we can find asymptotics of some observed force of the uh, particle system of, of the process. Okay, uh, in particular, uh, people make use of orthogonality of a duality function to study higher order fluctuation fields and quantitative Boltzmann Gibbs principle. So the orthogonality of duality function is quite useful. Okay, uh, let me introduce some uh, approaches to prove orthogonal duality. There are like, two big families of proofs. The first kind is analytic approaches. For example, uh, we can use the explicit relations between uh, orthogonal polynomials of different degrees, or uh, simply speaking, this is just the relationship, sorry, recurrence relation between of the po orthogonal polynomial. And we will match the recurrence relation with the definition for the process for the duality for the process. And uh, we can also make use of a generating function and do something similar. So uh, the, this two process actually uh, is kind of limited because first of all, you need to guess what is the duality function and uh, it has to be orthogonal. And we have to match it with the uh, generator of the process. And uh, there are some other methods. For example, we can take scalar products of triangular dualities, uh, and the resulting is a re resulting function is a duality function and is orthogonal. And uh, the last uh, method was recently uh, proved. So they prove a very powerful tool. Let's uh let's say that the Grand Schmidt orthogonization applied to triangular self duality function is again a duality function. And since we use Grand Schmidt uh method, the resulting function is orthogonal. So this method is pretty powerful. And there's another big family of uh of uh proof of orthogonal duality, which is based on algebraic structure of the process. So to use algebraic method, first, the duality. Uh -huh. Sorry, I have a question again. Uh, I guess I got a little bit confused. You explained what duality is, but mm -hmm. what could be or, uh, orthogonal duality? So orthogonal means uh, the, the function is orthogonal. Like the for duality, example. The duality? Uh -huh. Is orthogonal? Yeah, the duality function is orthogonal. Orthogonal mm -hmm. with respect to? Uh, with respect to uh, reversible measures, or is it just okay. orthogonal with respect to uh, the trivial norm, trivial inner product in L2 spaces? Okay, okay, thank you. 
Okay. Okay. So uh so uh to apply algebraic methods, we need to have some nice structure for the generator. So it it has to be constructed from a central element in algebra, which I will show an example in our proof. So with this nice structure, the duality, the orthogonal duality can be constructed uh, from a uh, kernel of a unitary intervinal in L2 spaces between star representations, or we can use unitary symmetries in L2 spaces. Then the unitary will give you the orthogonality. Okay, uh, so now let me show you some uh, previously proved, proved results about ASAP QJ. So uh, in 2021, uh, Karenji, Kiara, and Gerald Neflin, they proved that the ASAP QJ is still due with this orthogonal function, which is given by a nested product of Q quadrature polynomials. So, uh, this is the duality, orthogonal duality function for single species ASAP QJ. In their paper, they use the method of scalar products and also the method of symmetries. And then later, uh huh. So, can you remind me what the definition of the duality function is? Oh, the duality function uh, has to satisfy, sorry. Uh, so it's any function which satisfies? Uh, satisfies this equation. So is it any, any function which satisfies those is a duality function. function? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you have two processes. Either you can run one and take the expected mm -hmm. value of that process, or you can run the other process and take the expected value of that function, and you're going to have the same. And then, okay, one more time. Can you also remind me the definition for the duality? Uh, could you say that again? The orthogonal duality, like the definition. The orthogonal duality, it just means the duality function has to be orthogonal. In what sense, though? Like, uh, maybe with respect to uh, reversible measures. Uh, so it's just like the same as orthogonal polynomials. It's just uh, like it's unitary in L2 spaces. Does that make more sense? Yeah, I guess, because when I think of orthogonal polynomials, I think of like a collection of polynomials that are- uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. But in here, I, I only see one function. So I don't think, I feel like, so you just need that the norm is equal to one? Mm-hmm. So okay. here actually, uh, we have uh, quartal yeah. polynomials here. So the Q quadrature polynomial is an uh, orthogonal function, right? And uh -huh. we prove that the duality is like the product of the polynomial, which is orthogonal. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, I think we had a comment from the chat. It says the collection is parameterized by the number of particles in the dual process. Okay, so it, it will form a, a collection of Dual, dual functions and they're going to be orthogonal to each other with a specific measure from the process. Thanks. Okay, uh, maybe I will continue. So yeah. uh, so this is a duality function for uh, ASAP QJ. And uh, later I prove that the multi-species step 2J. So this is just the, uh, when Q goes to one in multi-species ASAP QJ. And I prove this uh, process is still of dual with respect to product of multi-fired quadrature polynomials. So uh, this is the duality function for, for this process. So with these two results, it is very natural to con conjecture what is a orthogonal duality function for multi-species ASAP Q theta. And uh, and this is our main result. We prove that the multi-species ASAP Q theta is self-dual with respect to product of multi-variate Q quadrature polynomials. Okay. 
and uh, it is orthogonal. However, uh, the formula for this polynomial is quite uh, messy. So here is an example. So this is the orthogonal duality function when we have two species in the system. And the duality function is like, these two are the duality function for single species. And we have some other terms given by uh, uh, reversible measures. And uh, okay. So now let me come back to this uh, picture. So uh, actually later in this talk, I will provide uh, duality function for all the process in this picture, especially uh, the duality function for this A sub Q data and this stochastic higher rank, higher spin vertex model is orthogonal. And uh, let me uh, show you how we will get duality function for other uh, models here. So maybe let's consider the degeneration from A sub Q theta to Q tau sub. This can be done by let let uh, the theta go to infinity. So uh, one simple idea to get a duality function for Q tau is that we just let theta go to infinity in the duality function in A sub Q theta. However, this will not work because uh, Q tau is not reversible. So when we take theta go to infinity, the result the result has to be uh, Preview. One way to overcome this problem is that we will introduce uh, charge parity transformation. So uh, the transformation T is an evolution that switch the I species with the N minus I species. So here, for example, if we apply the transformation to this uh, particle configuration, then it will switch uh, the balls and the holes, for example, at site one, it will then have only one ball here. Then, uh, and this inflation also change the direction of a drift. For example, here uh, in this first graph, if all the balls have drift to the right, then all the holes have a uh, drift to the left. That's why if we apply this transformation, we will get a space reversed uh, process as the dual process. So uh, if we uh, apply this inflation to the dual process and then take J go to infinity in A sub Q J, we will have a duality result for space reverse uh, Q tau sub. So, uh, here, equation six is a uh, space reverse duality for multi species Q tau sub. And we also, we can also prove directly that this uh, uh, duality function for the discrete time and continuous time Q hand tau sub. So this is a duality function for this three uh, process. Okay, the last result is a uh, duality function for a uh, stochastic higher spin, higher rank vertex model. I'm not going to uh, talk about why this is also a duality function, but if you know how to construct the model uh, from the R matrix, uh, the proof will be straightforward. Let me move on. So to apply our duality result, uh, we can. Uh, choose cosi and eta to both involve as q tau sub. And we also chose some specific initial uh, condition. So uh, for example, we let cosi has only uh, two species and it has n one particles of species zero at site x1 and n two species of sorry, n2 particles of species two at site x2 and involve as q tau sub with total asymmetry to the right. And we let the dual process to be uh, pretty simple, which means it has only two particles of different 
uh, species. Then in this case, the duality function will be uh, pretty simple. It only takes six values uh, given by the six here. So uh, with these six specific values, we can use the duality function to write down such a explicit formula. So on the left-hand side, this can be considered as a Q-shifted factorial moment of the q tarset And on the uh, right-hand side, this is given by the linear combination of some specific values. So the PI are given by the following contour integrals. And this will derive based on the integrability of uh, Q tarset. So uh, with this explicit formula, it is believed that uh, if we study asymptotics, we will get the rate of the correlation at two sides. And maybe in the future, we will do this. OK, uh, so here uh, I have talked about all of my uh, main results. Next, maybe let me tell you about the proof. And uh, <clears throat> you will see uh, why, the US, why the generator has some low specific jump rates. So uh, let me introduce a general algebraic setup for duality. So uh, in 2014, uh, Karen Shigarina, Reddick, and Sasamoto, they constructed ASAPQJ with uh, algebras. So we start with algebra UQSL2 and the central element C in this algebra. And then we fix a choice of co-product and let's little h to be the co-product of the uh, central element C. Then we define a quantum Hamiltonian to be the sum of a little h applied to side x and x plus one. So in this uh, setup, the Hamiltonian h happens to be self-adjoint. Then uh, if there's a positive ground state g, such that hg is equal to zero, then we let capital G to be the diagonal matrix whose entries are the coefficients in G. In this case, the generator of A sub Q J can be written as G inverse H J. And G squared is a reversible measure for the process A sub Q J. With this algebraic construction for the generator, we can find dualities pretty uh, simple. So if S is a symmetry of the Hamiltonian H, which means S and H commute, then uh, G inverse S G inverse will be a self-duality function of the generator L. That's how we construct duality uh, for this uh, process ASAP QJ. So uh, let me talk about uh, how multi-species ASAP QJ was uh, constructed. So this construction was done by my advisor and he make use of uh, representations of quantum group UQ, G, L, N. So again, we start with a Hamiltonian H and a symmetry S, but this H is not self-adjoint. However, uh, there exists a diagonal matrix D such that B inverse HB is self-adjoint. Then we can construct uh, the multi-species ASAP QJ in the same way. So the generator is again, can be written as G inverse HJ and the duality is G inverse SG inverse times B squared. So this is a slightly modification of the previous method. All right, uh, so uh, with this algebraic construction, uh, what we did is first, we make use of the star by algebra structure of UQ, GLN plus one. 
and we first construct a inhomogeneous version of multi-species ASAP QJ. And then for the duality function, we first define an inner product on the representation, and we find a unitary symmetry with respect to the inner product defined. So in this case, uh, the duality function will be orthogonal. Let me uh, first remind you what is the quantum group UQGLN. It is a Hopf algebra with generators EI, I plus one, EI plus one I and Q to the EII. And they satisfy the following relations. So uh, next, uh, let me define uh, what is the co-product. The co-product is given by the following and uh, the co-product is asymmetric. That's why uh, we will have asymmetry in our process. And uh, when Q is a non-zero real number, the quantum group will have a structure of helpful star by star algebra with uh, the inclusion star given by the following. And now uh, let me define a representation of the quantum group. So we fix a uh, basis with vectors mu, such that uh, mu one plus uh, the summation of mu i is equal to m. And as you can tell, this uh, vector actually corresponds to all the possible configurations at a single site. And we let Vm to be a vector space with basis vectors V mu indexed by those uh, configurations. We define the action of the quantum group on the basis vectors as the following. So for example, the generator Ei i plus one acts by uh, add one particle of species i and remove one particle of species i plus one. So let me show you an example. So here we have a configuration at one side and we have one black particles and two red particles. And if, if we apply the generator E01, it will add one particle uh, of species one, which is a black particle, and it will re remove a red particle. So if we apply E01 to the first uh, configuration here, we will have this configuration. And this is how uh, the algebra and our uh, state space can be related. And uh, the action of EI plus one I and Q to the EI is defined in the same way. Okay, so now we have a representation. Uh, we need to show that this is a star representation with respect to some inner product. So a star representation means that uh, when V has an inner product, uh, then any A in this algebra satisfy this equation. So you kind of you can compare this to like a joint operator in Hilbert space. It's quite similar. Okay, uh, so now we, we give a explicit inner product of our representation, which is given by this one. And we can show that uh, with this inner product, our representation is indeed a star representation of UQGL n plus one. So now we have the inner product and we have star representation the last step is to uh, define, to find the unitary symmetry that will give us uh, the orthogonal duality function. So let me introduce some uh, notations and functions in the algebra. So the Q exponentials are given uh, by equation eight. The little EQ and big EQ, uh, they are given by uh, the series and they satisfy some relations given by equation nine and 10. Uh, so the 
little eq squared and capital eq squared, they are in mutual inverses of each other. And they also satisfy uh, some equations called the Q, Baker, Hemphill, Hausdorff equations. And uh, with this uh, relations, we can prove that uh, this element here is actually unitary in the quantum group. In other words, uh, the U lambda star is equal to its inverse. So with this unitary element U lambda, uh, we apply, after we apply the representation, we will get the orthogonal duality function for multi-species ASAP Q theta. Okay, uh, so last, uh, I will talk about another model that our method will apply. So, uh, hello? Okay, uh, wait, there are some echoes. Let me see. Okay, uh, I think it's, it's there's no. All right, okay, I think we're okay. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there is a process called type D ASAP, which was uh, constructed two years ago by uh, in a RU program. Uh, it was constructed with the type D quantum groups UQSO6 and UQSO8, which uh, they both has a uh, by, star by algebra structure. And uh, in this process, there are two different species and two particles may occupy the same site if they have different class or different species. And in this process, we do not give priority for one species over another, but there are some non-trivial interactions between the two species. And there are some uh, parameters in this process. So Q is the asymmetry parameter, N is the speed of drift, and the delta shows you the interaction between the two species of particles. And also, we proved a reversible measure for this process. And here is a simula simulation for this uh, process. We started from a step initial condition, and this is a uh, the first species, and this is the second species. And as time goes to uh, infinity, we can show that the height function has a limit, and we conjecture that this limit is the same as for ASAP. Okay, next. Uh, this is the orthogonal duality we get if we use the same method I, I uh, talked about earlier. This shows you the duality function for type D ASAP is an independent product of duality for two single species. And with this duality result, we can conjecture that uh, the fluctuation of type D ASAP is given again by tracy Willen distribution. And my advisor also simulated this uh, fluctuation. And this are uh, the histograms of the fluctuation. And the curve here is the tracer rhythm distribution. And uh, maybe uh, we will prove this later with our duality results. Okay, uh, that's all of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Question, Sarah, please. Questions in the chat? Uh, so in that simulation, what was that, that picture simulated? It's high, but I mean, or the, that this one. one, yeah. This one? So yeah. here uh, on the line, we have the, uh, uh, the particles. And this one is the height function of the particles, of the process. So uh, the height function uh, tells you for example, the height function at this site tells you at this time how many particles has uh, has moved to the left of this site. 
does not make but, sense. And so how many particles are there all together? Two. Uh, uh, could you say that again? How many particles are there at the beginning? Or oh, uh, so uh, in the positive uh, in the positive lines, there are particles at each at each side. So there are infinitely many particles in the system. And uh, at first, there's no particle oh, okay. on the Let's negative that. line. So that's the, okay. Uh, another way that you can think about it is that for the particle configuration, you can replace a hole with a slope down and a particle with a slope up. So at initial configurations, it's just a big B. And then as it switches, it creates a, this jagged shape. And a slope down will tell you a particle, and a slope up will tell you uh, a hole or the other way around, actually. Yeah, so, so initially all the particles were on one side. Yeah. Okay. And then they start moving to the left. Um, I had a question, and I wanted to just uh, quickly. So with this whole like duality and the quantum groups, uh, I just want to make sure I understand. So you start by uh, defining the Markov process on the by a representation of the quantum group, mm -hmm. and, and the and so the the representation of the elements in the quantum group give you the Markov matrix for the process, and then using the like the co-product structure or the this type of stuff, you, this is how you define a dual process. Uh, you mean the co-product here? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, so yeah. that co co-product, is that, is that where the duality comes from or the dual process uh, you define oh, the dual? Not really. Uh, so the co-product actually defines like uh, uh, action at defines an element at two sides. So actually uh, the co-product brings the action at one side to an action at two sides. So uh, this only acts on the first uh, particle. So I guess the process. I guess my question is if I if I have a process defined on the quantum group the way that you define it, is there an easy way to know what the dual process will be? Um is it also I, defined in the quantum algebra? So usually we choose the dual process to be the same. Tough dual. So, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but there are some ways to uh get uh different dual process if we use representations. If we use different representations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, any more questions? Okay, let's think, think it one more time.